I'd like to welcome everyone to the April 9th, 2020 meeting of the Burlington Conservation Commission. Uh, if you're not already muted on the microphone, I think you ought to do that. We're getting some feedback. All right, so uh, at first, uh, the first item on the agenda is to uh, read a notice. And there is a notice because we're doing things a little bit different. Okay, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain revisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Town of Burlington Conservation Commission is being conducted through remote participation. No in-person <laughs> attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in this order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to or view the meeting while in progress may do so by turning to BCAT. And on the screen, you will see uh, the three different ways of possibly joining our meeting. The first way is to go to the town's uh, calendar or the Conservation Commission's website and click on the link. Uh, if you're not familiar with WebEx, they will ask you to do, download a small application and then you may join the meeting uh, live if you would like to participate. Uh, the second way of going doing the same thing is to go to the WebEx website, webex.com, and you could uh, join the meeting that way. And the way of doing that is there's a meeting number displayed on the screen. And if you need it, there is a uh, alphanumeric password as well. And finally, if you'd like an easier way of joining this meeting, you can telephone 408 418 9388. And it's you just type in uh, or punch in meeting number 710-386-777. Uh, new public hearings open tonight will not be closed. So as to allow for comments from anyone who's unable to access or in case you are uncomfortable with the technology. Comments and concerns regarding public hearings should be emailed to conservation at Berlin meeting, which will be held on April 23rd. Okay. All right. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, call out our roll call uh, and the members of the commission first. Uh, the first member is Don Bernstein and say, here. Yeah. Here. Gail Lima. Here. Indra Deb. Yeah. Bill Boyven. I'm here. Jennifer O'Reardon. Here. Ed Loturco. Here. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. We have uh, two other people that are part of the commission. We have uh, John Keeley, our conservation administrator. Here. And we have Eileen Coleman, who is our assistant administrator. Here. All right. Uh, and a few, a few other uh, a few other things. If anyone, I will be calling on the commissioners uh, to speak in order as we move through the agenda on each item. Before I introduce the agenda, I'll ask anyone who is going to speak on behalf of the agenda item to unmute their telephone, unmute their, their uh, voice thing, and uh, identify themselves by name. Okay, and then uh, that will be after I read the notes. Uh, if anyone wants to speak, beyond those parameters uh, of people I call on in normal rotation. Uh, then what you can do is simply, there's two ways of doing that. Uh, you can either go to the chat function and see the name and you can raise your hand. Uh, I have a few microphones that are still open. You may want to mute them. So 
As Gail, uh, Larry, you might just want to describe to people that have logged on, you know, how to actually mute it. I'm not sure everyone knows what to do. All right. Well, when you uh, click on the main screen, if you're on, you will see uh, a microphone symbol and the far left symbols at the bottom. All you have to do is click on the microphone and you'll be able to uh, uh, mute on or mute off if you would like to speak. So the, 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 the two ways, again, of of asking to speak, if I haven't called on you, uh, that applies to uh, proponents and abutters, is to simply uh, go to the chat feature and press the raise hand. And, and our uh, conservation administrator or our assistant conservation administrator will notice it and uh, will we'll either call on you directly or ask me to call on you. Uh, the second way is to send a brief message that you have a comment. You can click on uh, either Eileen Coleman or John Keeley, and you can simply say, I have a comment, and uh, you're, you're, that will get the attention of Eileen Coleman or John Keeley, and you will get called upon as well. For the duration of anything else, if you're not speaking, please take a moment to mute your, mute your microphone, because we're getting a lot of feedback when you don't do that. So Larry, I just want to make a point for some people that maybe not use this kind of technology before. I mean, you really have to mute it when you're not talking because even something simple like tapping on your cell phone, something that you don't think you're making noise causes uh, it to um, kind of echo back to the microphone. You could actually call people out to and we can see who doesn't have their thing muted. I've lost my chat. So, Tim, you could please mute your microphone. Uh, can you hear me? Well, can now, but so you need to click it because we don't want to hear you right now. <laughs> please. Oh. <clears throat> this is it. I don't have the right hand chat list. And if you click on the little thing that looks like it looks like a speech bubble, that should bring you to the chat. And there is someone named Maureen who perhaps should also click on there, mute their microphone. Is that the little red one at the top, Eileen? Um, at, I think at the bottom of your screen, there's a line of icons. There's um, the red X is at the right, and two to the left of that is the chat button. It's like a thought bubble. Okay. It's bubble, thought bubble. It comes up, but there's nothing in it. Um, there won't be anybody in the chat unless, you know, you're thinking of the participant list, uh, Ed, I think. So just wait. Mm hmm. Okay, I think we can move along. Okay, all votes will be taken by roll call. I'll have to call each individual because of the way we're doing things. I will be calling each individual when we vote on anything tonight. Uh, and also I'd like to point out that uh, as well as BCAT recording the meeting, we also have uh, uh, a recording feature on the web client that we're using, the WebEx, and that's also, I believe, recording the meeting as well, okay? All right, so the uh, first item on the agenda after all those preliminaries is uh, citizens time. Uh, if uh, there's anyone who is listening in either by phone or by video conference, I uh, would like to say a few words about something not on the agenda. Uh, I'd be happy to entertain that. Okay. Uh, the, the uh, record will show that no one uh, chimed in for citizens' time. <clears throat> Item three on the agenda is the approval of minutes for March 12th, 2020. 
Uh, does anyone have anything substantial to discuss about the minutes? Hearing nothing further, I'd like to call for a motion to approve. Anyone would like to do that? Identify no, yourself. Move. Okay, and is there a second? A okay. second, Gail. Okay. All right. All in favor? John Burnson. Yes, I. Uh, Gail. Yes. Indra. Abstain. Uh, Bill. Yes. Uh, Jennifer. Yes. All right, Ed. Yes. And uh, I, Larry, am abstaining. I wasn't there. All right, Mr. Mr. Have... Chairman. Yes. I just want to mention this is Indra, Indra Deb. I want to mention that I have watched the video of the meeting dated March twelfth. Uh, and. Since you reminded me, Indra, I wasn't there. I'd like to also say the same thing. <laughs> this is, I say the same thing. This is it. All right. All right. Now, uh, we have a couple of other matters before we proceed with the agenda. Uh, this is the first meeting of uh, two new people who are associated uh, now with the commission. Uh, the first is uh, Don Bernstein. I'd like to introduce Don remotely, I guess. Uh, I've known Dawn for a very long time since our our uh, children were small, uh, and he's a fine person. And Dawn uh, comes to us as a longtime resident of Burlington, and uh, he uh, is someone who has uh, 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 video and still imagery for a talent. He does that in his own uh, business, and before that, he did that for. Uh, Raytheon Corporation. Uh, he's familiar with communications applications and has been involved in public relations and advertising. Uh, he is a professional photographer, a photojournalist, and he did do some work in school in photojournalism, and he has some expertise in uh, digital and image editing. So I'd like to take this opportunity, Don, to welcome you formally to the commission. And if you ever have any questions, you may contact me or any other commissioners or our staff, and we can help you along the way as you begin to learn what we do. Thank you very much, appreciate it. All right, I'd like to also introduce Kent Moffitt. Uh, Kent has been appointed as an associate uh, commissioner. Uh, we're privileged to have him. We don't often get associate people volunteering to be uh, associate commissioners, and uh, uh, he is, uh, a member of our community, and his background is in uh, uh, financial uh, and accounting and math type things and figures, and he's familiar with overseeing uh, uh, in his career of procedures and processes and reports and documenting things, uh, and uh, he, he prepares the kind of reports that auditors often uh, are interested in. He has worked for a financial institution. He has worked for Partners Healthcare in the past. And uh, he uh, has been an active member of our community. He actually has been a member of the Public Partnership Committee of the Town of Burlington. He is a member of the Scholarship Committee of the Town of Burlington, a member at large of uh, American Parkinson's Disease Association, the uh, Massachusetts chapter. and. He is a former alternate member of the Board of Appeals for the Town of Burlington and a former admissions committee member for the University of Massachusetts of the Lowell Young Alumni Council. So with that as an introduction, uh, Kent, I'd like to formally welcome you to your first meeting. And you are associate commissioners. Other than voting privileges, you have all other rights and privileges to discuss and comment and to uh, uh, and to comment on any of the matters before the commission and to participate in our activities. Thank you. All right, so very good. Well, we're delighted to have both of you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is item four. It is a request for a certificate of compliance and a return of surety. It's for 10 Carroll Ave. Uh, by Deborah Goldberg. It's DEP file number 122-611. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, 
Uh, call on our staff, either Eileen or John, to make some comments, and then we'll see if the commission has any. Um, hi, this is Eileen. Uh, this was a teardown and rebuild that the commission um, approved in late 2018. Um, I took, a, I took a, a visit to the site a couple of weeks ago and everything is as expected. The um, gutters were, the, the downspouts were connected into some kind of subterranean system. There's a sign up showing uh, de a demarcation where the wetlands are. Um, the grass is pretty well established. Um, there's, uh, there was a stone bed underneath the, um, underneath the deck. I don't have any issues with this um, uh, COC at the moment. Would anybody like to see any of the photographs I took or, or the as-built plan? You need me to share it on the screen? Okay, and, and you should note, Eileen, you previously sent those pictures around. I did. Okay. All right. So, uh, right. Uh, I'll just, I'll quickly go in order. If I don't hear anything, uh, I will, uh, uh, of the names here, and see if anyone has any comment. Don? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, no comment so far. Gail? No comment. No, all good. Indra? No comment. Bill? No comment. The house looks nice. Uh, Jennifer? Uh, no comment. Ed? No comment. Kent? Okay. Comment. All right. Uh, all right, so therefore, uh, I have nothing further other than I reviewed the pictures and it looks pretty clear that the site was in pretty good shape. Uh, so, could I have a motion to approve the Certificate of Compliance for 10 Carol Ave De by Deborah Goldberg, DE number 122-611? Is Ed so moved? Second. Second. Okay. Uh, I will do the roll call. Okay, I know this is a little cumbersome, but we're gonna to have to do this after each vote. Uh, uh, the, the motion's on the floor. Don? Yes. Gail? Yes. Indra? Yes. Bill? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Ed? Yes. And I am? Um, Larry and I am in for it as well. Therefore, it carries unanimously. Okay, uh, Eileen, do you see any reason for holding back any other bond? Um, no, I don't. The bond was twenty five hundred. So all right. So uh, Larry, so the act actually the applicants um, got an order of conditions for another project, Seven Hold and Ave, in January, yes. and they've just asked us to transfer that bond to that project. It's the same amount. So. It was a two, cash bond. Do we, need cash. Two, do we need two motions, John? Um, just one motion to to transfer to to transfer that amount twenty five hundred dollars from this project to Seven Holden Ave. All right. So long as we use the words, we're releasing it the whole bond for this one. Correct. Yeah. All right. Could I have a motion to release the full amount of the twenty five hundred dollars surety uh, for ten Carol Ave for DP file number one twenty two dash six eleven? and to transfer that same cash payment as to be held as bond for seven Holden Ave. This is Bill, so moved. This is Indra, second. All those in favor, Don? Yes. Okay, Gail? Yes. Indra? Aye. Bill? Uh, yes. Jennifer? Yes. And Ed? Yes. Okay, and I vote yes, Larry. All right, that carries unanimously. Okay, very good. Uh, next item on the agenda okay, is item five. Notice is hereby given that the town of Burlington with will hold a public hearing on Thursday, March 26th, uh, during which time the purpose of the public hearing is to take all information relating to an erosion and sedimentation control permit application. It was filed by the Town of Burlington DPW Engineering Division for reconstruction of an existing parking lot at 114 Wind Street. It is the Marshall Simons Middle School. The application is being heard pursuant to Burlington Bylaw Article 14, 
Section six, the commission will be reviewing all information relative to the application and thereafter may issue an erosion and sedimentation control permit for the proposed activity. The application materials available in the conservation office for public review. So the representatives who are here should identify themselves and the floor is open to you. Hello, this is Tom Hayes, town engineer, and I'm here with Tim Mazzoni. Tim is the uh, project engineer and the designer of, the, of the, uh, these, these two projects, the human services as well as the Marshall Simons. So um, Larry, I have a, a quick PowerPoint. If you want me to go through it, I can. Uh, please, please do, that would be fine. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share um, I'm gonna share the screen with you all, and I'm gonna start with um, uh, the I'm sorry the um, we're starting with the uh, Marshall Simons Middle School. Sure. If you give me a moment. Okay, and well, I haven't done the public hearing yet. For, I haven't opened the one for the uh, uh, the Human Services Building yet. All right, I'll, I'll, what I'll do, Larry, is I'll run through the uh, Marshall Simons, and then we'll do the, the second presentation after that. All right, that, that's great, Tom. Thank you. All right. All right, so you all can see the, um, we, we have the uh, PowerPoint up. Is everyone? Yes, yes, we questions? do. All right. So here we are. This is um, the uh, Marshall Simons Middle School, uh, okay. 114 Wind Street. And uh, if you give me a moment, I just gotta. I'm sorry, I have to move. Uh, I have to move some stuff around here real quick. I have uh, actually on my uh, my WebEx is covering my uh, my presentation, so I can't see it. So I move it over. So here we are. This is. Um, 114 Wind Street, Marshall Simons Middle School. This is the area right here. So what we're going to do is, um, this is the property. It is at the corner of Wind Street and Peach Orchard. We will put our Google view on, so you see the aerial. You see the the uh, playing field in the back, and this is the uh, school right here, Wind Street, Peach Orchard. This is the area that we intend to pave. This location. This is the plan that's submitted. It's a little disjointed uh, in order to, to fit both um, parking lots on one sheet. We've, we've uh, rotated one. So what we'll do to explain this is um, we'll do it on the aerial. So this is the parking lot. Um, this is the area that we're planning to pave. What we intend to do is, uh, as, well as, as well as paving, we, we intend to rebuild all these sidewalks. So the sidewalks right now are between six and eight uh, feet wide. So we're gonna reduce them all to about between four and five to be consistent. So we're gonna um, reduce the impervious as well as uh, create some more green space. We're also uh, installing all uh, deep sump catch basins. So we're replacing the existing uh, catch basins out there with deep sump catch basins with hoods. We're installing some bollards at the request of the school to prevent um, any sort of conflicts with the, uh, the children uh, waiting to be picked up and the cars coming through the pickup area. Uh, so this is just kind of a rundown of all the improvements uh, that we're intending to do there. So we have uh, mostly uh, pedestrian accommodations. So improved sidewalks, we're putting in HP ramps, we're doing bullets at the uh, drop-off area, and then we are improving uh, stormwater. So we, we have improved quality by using the deep sump catch basins, as well as a reduction in impervious um, by reducing the sidewalks from the, uh, from the eight feet down to the, to the five feet. And with that, we will uh, entertain any questions you might have. Okay, uh, very good. Thank you, Tom, that was very good. And just like you said, it was very brief. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, John R. Eileen, do you have, first we'll go to you for comments on the project. Okay, so it's a basically a simple repaving project. It triggers the, the stormwater bylaw uh, because it's over 20,000 square feet of land disturbance. Um, but um, there, 
reducing the pavement, they're um, improving stormwater quality, um, and not expanding the footprint, obviously, reducing the footprint of impervious areas. So we don't have any problems with this. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, let me uh, first uh, call out a rotation of the commission. Uh, we'll start with uh, Ed. Uh, any comment? No comment from here. Uh, Jennifer, any comment on this one? Um, no comment. Looks great. Thank you. All right, Bill. The reduction in or incre increase in green space, is that strictly from the reduction in the sidewalks? Is that the only place that it's gaining? Did anyone hear my question? That's for Tom, right? Um, I think Tim is trying. I think Tim might be having some technical problems over there, but um, yeah, the, all we're doing to reduce uh, impervious is, re, is the reduction of the width of the sidewalks. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, I left off with Bill. Indra? Yeah, this is Indra. I have just one question. How much, uh, Tom, how much you are reducing the impervious area? Total area? Tim? Do you have a number of, on how much we're reducing? The microphone is muted. I don't I think he can't hear, right? It's hard to tell because he has his microphone muted. Oh. Hey, Tim, can you wave your hand if you, if you uh, hear us? Yes. Right, he's having a problem with his microphone. Um, you have to click them. There you go. Tom, this is Indra. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you, Indra. Uh, yeah. Tim, Tim is the designer. So I really don't have the numbers. It's oh. not a significant decrease just because. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of sidewalks out there, and we're reducing them pretty significantly, but it's not, it, it may be, you know, 500, 600 square feet max. It's not. Okay. Can, can I just oh. interject? Tim, Tim could actually use the chat feature just to give that number if he wants. His, if he wants. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll move on unless someone objects. Let's see. We left off with uh, Indra, Gail. Um, so I just had a question. So you are paving over by the track, right? The new in the new field, correct or no, not? Well, the whole back of the parking lot. So the the track was paved in front of the, the okay. track was paved last, last year. Okay, that's fine. Then I, I just wanted to clarify that. So that that area does look new. The area, you know, kind of off of uh, Locust. That that lot yep. there. That's not being touched. No, that was done last year. Okay. All right. So this is the, the second phase. We'll yeah. complete the parking lot. No, that's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I am all set, Larry. This is Indra. I'm all set. Yeah, I, I hear you. Okay, Don. Do you have any comment? Oh, <clears throat> looks good. All right, Kent. Do you have anything further from you? Uh, no, looks good to me. All right. Uh, I had a quick question for John and Eileen on this one. Uh, given that they're reducing the pavement and given that they're changing to deep sump catch bases, which obviously is a substantial improvement, uh, is there anything further in regards to improving stormwater quality that you think the commission should ask for? Okay, so this is John. Um, I mean, that's basically your call. I mean, the, the catch basins probably are really bad, so it's probably a substantial improvement by putting in brand new catch basins. Um, and this probably discharges, does this discharge into the peach orchard drainage system, Tom? Well, this discharges uh, to that wetlands that's behind, that runs behind the track. Okay. All right. Um, it's up to you. I mean, I think, the. The improvement in the catch basins is pretty substantial for a project of this. Once again, it's the scope of the project. You know, it's 
It's just a, a parking lot repavement. All right. I don't have anything further. I agree with you, John. Uh, it is a substantial improvement given the condi current condition of what's out there. Uh, all right. Is there anyone in the audience for this? This is a uh, public hearing. If you are not able to communicate with us, but you have some comments, you can uh, submit those in writing by email. Most people are familiar with email. Or you can uh, either raise your hand electronically, as I indicated before in the chat feature, or you can send a message to uh, Eileen or John Keeley uh, that you would like to make a comment. So is there, I'll, I'll take a pause. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to comment? All right, uh, the record should show that there was no public participation as of today. Uh, so as we announced earlier, uh, Tom, we were uh, going to uh, not close today, but we will close at the uh, prop. I don't see any reason we can't close on the April 23rd meeting. Uh, is So I would suggest asking for a continuance till then. Yeah, we're fine with that. Okay, that's that's perfect. Okay, so that I think that does it for this item. And Tom, I think you're up next again. Okay, so let me pull up the paperwork here. Okay, this is um, <clears throat> item number six on our agenda. Notice is hereby given the Town of Burlington Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing during which time we will take information related to an erosion and sedimentation control permit application, again filed by the Town of Burlington DPW Engineering Division. This is for the construction of a parking lot at 61 Center Street, the Human Services Building in Burlington. The applications being heard pursuant to Burlington bylaw, Article 14, Section 6, the sedimentation and er erosion permit hearing we will hear uh, from the applicant. Uh, the application material is in the conservation office for public review. Uh, again, the floor is yours, Mr. Hayes. Thank you very much. So again, I'm going to share my screen with you. So we'll run through a quick PowerPoint. So we'll make sure this thing fires up. All right. So this is um, uh, the uh, human services. This is the human services 61 Center Street. So this is location right here. Uh, this is the property. We'll zoom in a little bit closer and we'll turn our uh, aerials on. And you can see this is uh, the Human Services Building. We have the Grandview Farm uh, just a little bit north of that. And then uh, the uh, senior housing, Grandview Senior Housing right here, ball field out back. A um, little more close up on the parking lot. And what we'll do is um, we're going to rotate this drawing around a little bit. And then we're going to drop in, uh, this is our design drawing. So this is a, a multi-year project. Um, we've, we've spent, uh, if anyone's been following it, um, probably two years. Uh, this has gone through uh, design and redesign in order to make something that works for everyone. So um, in order to do this, uh, we're going to do it in two phases because we can't really take all the parking lots out of play at one time. So the first phase is right here. This is the first phase. This is where we're asking for the erosion control uh, permit. Uh, next year, we'll be back asking for a uh, permit for the second phase, but we'll, we'll talk about this one right now. So this is what it looks like uh, currently. We have two entrances. We have uh, the horseshoe with the grass in front. So what we intend to do is uh, we're going to seal up uh, one of the entrances here and replace it in grass. And then we're going to um, take this area uh, and remove the grass and put pavement back. So once it's all said and done, it's kind of it's going to look like this. This is the uh, layout of the new parking lot that we're constructing in front of the Human Services Building. So um, some of the features that I want to show you is uh, one entrance. Uh, so we have two-way traffic, and the reason we are doing a, a single entrance is um, very confusing. If you have, if you have a drive in there, if you're going to the uh, Grandview, you have to drive 
all the way through the horseshoe, or if you're going to um, uh, the senior housing, again, you have to drive in front of hum the human services building. There's a lot of mixing, a lot of mixing of pedestrians and vehicles, and we decided a central um, entrance exit would eliminate all that um, mixing up of the people and the cars. Another, um, uh, another benefit is we're adding uh, a lot of pedestrian accommodations. We're putting in more sidewalks and more crosswalks to get people around uh, on the property. We're going to uh, add some additional lighting in front. And we are also installing a fully compliant, state-of-the-art uh, drain system. We're adding uh, deep sump catch basins, a storm, a storm scepter to, to, um, to get our TSS removal. And then finally, we're going to add some trees to try to mimic what we have in front of the human services building right now. The uh, second part, which I'll, I'll go through real quick, because it, it, it's kind of dovetailed together to get an idea of the whole project. So next year, we'll be reconstructing the rear parking lot. So some of the, uh, this is what it looks like right now. Uh, um, what we intend to do is strip out a big chunk of pavement on the back, and we're gonna replace that with grass. Uh, and the reason we're doing that is to not only reduce impervious, but we want to um, reduce the aisle width. Right now, if you go out there, the aisle width is probably 30 or 32 feet wide. We want to reduce it to something that is standard so that there's um, a little safer that slows the traffic down a little bit more. We're also installing a raised island on this corner. If you're familiar, you'll, you'll know that the back of the um, building is where folks leave from the recreation office. And we've had a lot of complaints of folks cutting the corner as they're coming around. So we're gonna put an island there to try to uh, make it a little safer for the folks that are leaving the building. Uh, and also we're adding more lighting. And uh, so this is overall, these are uh, a summary of what we're doing out there. So we're, we're adding 20 spaces in the front of the building. Uh, we're going to do a lot of pedestrian uh, and HP accommodations, sidewalks, crosswalks, islands, reducing the width of the aisle. And then we're significantly improving uh, stormwater quality, as well as a reduction in overall impervious pavement. With that, um, I'll take any questions you might have. Uh, this is uh, Don. Um, I have a question regarding the front uh, entrance. What's the logic behind um, sealing up the current entrance? So the, the problem we have is the mixing of, of pedestrians in vehicles. So if you're going to Grandview Farm, and I, I, what I can do is uh, I'll roll this back a little bit. You have to pass the building. You have to pass in front of the Human Services Recreation Building, which um, is something that that we uh, that was it was decided that it wasn't. Uh, it's not safe. You know, you have a not only you have folks who are um, you know uh, um, you know going to recreation, but you have the seniors there, and we want to reduce as much traffic in front of the in front of the building. Uh, as possible. Plus, it's it's also very confusing. A lot of folks who want to go to the Grandview uh, Conference Center, they're not familiar with Burlington, and they drive up in one way. So we we want to avoid that. We decided it was much better to have a centralized uh, entrance exit. Okay, thank you, Larry. You're muted. Okay. I yeah, I'll be calling on you, uh, Don, in a minute. Uh, you have comments on uh, uh, on this project, please. Were you asking me? Yes. Okay. Um, so once again, so this uh, this is not just a repavement project. This is construction of a new parking lot. So. Subsequently, um, would be looking for storm, you know, meeting stormwater standards to the maximum extent practicable, which means um, not increasing peak, re peak rates of runoff and reducing TSS to the maximum extent practicable. So the reduction in pavement reduces the peak flows and the volume of runoff, and the um, storm scepter will help meet the TSS uh, requirement. 
the Psalm Catch Basin and and the uh, Storm Center. All right. All right. So, uh, uh, Don, do you have anything further? Um, no, I, I, I guess I don't uh, in, from an environmental point of view, but what I can tell you is I, I, I've observed that the um, parking lot in, in the rec center, that human services building is awfully busy uh, quite a bit of the time. And um, that's why I was asking about uh, eliminating the entrance as of now. Um, I don't know if that's, this is our, uh, anything appropriate to comment comment on as it's not an environmental issue, but um, that's my only comment. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, uh, sometimes uh, traffic often gets brought up, uh, usually by an abutter who is usually concerned about a proposed project or can be brought up by a commissioner if they want, but generally speaking, uh, uh, we focus on natural resources and uh, you'll fi often find uh, that the planning board traffic is usually a very big issue. Yeah, I understand. No, so no further comments. That's fine. You can. You're, you're welcome to any any other comments. I'll certainly welcome. Uh, Gail, anything further? Yeah. So uh, actually, I think it uh, looks good. I think it's actually a, a nice improvement to um, um, to it should reduce stormwater out, out to uh, Center Street with not only the drainage but just having more. Uh, vegetation there that will catch things that run down. Um, I just curious, uh, and also um, in terms of commission interest, um, what kind of trees are you? Do you know that they have a landscape uh, plan yet? What they're going to plant there along the front? We're going to try to match what's out there now. I believe it's a it's a maple. Uh, I'm not really a tree guy, but so yeah, we want. Yeah, I mean, you know, we just are looking for native species. That's all. Native yeah. That's most it's going to be funny, a little funny for a few years because we'll replace what we're, what we're putting in is probably two two and a half caliber trees which will eventually grow but right now the trees out there are probably eight ten inches in diameter but it, you know it's a start mm -hmm. okay that's it all right thank you gail uh indra uh, yeah tom uh, you said that you are adding a storm scepter and what are you doing with the rooftop runoff We're not touching the rooftop runoff at all. We're intercepting um, just the, the drainage off the parking lot. Uh, so where it is going now, do you know, existing rooftop runoff? All the rooftop runoff flows onto the parking lot, and then it will eventually make its way into the drainage system. Okay. So are you reducing any impervious area or increasing? or? We're reducing the impervious area by, by about 400 square feet. How much? 400. Oh, 400 square feet. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty much a wash. I see. Okay. All right. Thank you, Tom. All right. Uh, Bill, comments, please. Uh, you are changing the one-way driveway to two-way, and but you're not widening it. Is that correct? That's correct. We're... Uh, Upgrading with a new sidewalk, but we're not uh, widening the pavement at all. So we're, we're um, I think we have like 24, 26 feet of pavement. This so was there's plenty of plenty of room for um, two way traffic. Yeah, I'm just thinking that traditionally people park along that. I guess that won't be an option anymore. No, that that'll be eliminated. Okay. So that's a net gain in parking space, as you mentioned, losing ones on the street. We have like uh, an additional 20 spaces. Okay, thank you. All right, Jennifer. No comment. And Ed. Comment. Okay. Mr. Chairman, can yes. I ask a question? You certainly can. Thank you. Uh, Tom, uh, you said that you are reducing the width from 30 feet. 24 feet between the parkings at the rear. So are you g gaining any parking doing that or why you are reducing? Well, if you if you go on the back of the human services building, uh, mm -hmm. the, the aisle width is it's very wide. Right. So there's really no reason to have 30 feet of aisle width. So um, we're reducing it to a standard width and that also allows us to, re to reduce the impervious. I see, okay, good. All right, thank you. 
But uh, this is John, just to clarify, that's not part of this project. That's the project that Tom said they'll be filing next year. I see. Okay. All right, uh, Tom, uh, it looks like from uh, where you're constructing your parking lot from the front of the street to uh, Center Street, it looks like it ranges from 60 to 100 feet. Uh, I assume you're going to put erosion controls somewhere along there. Uh, could you make some comments about what, what you folks are planning to do for that? So whatever we need to do for erosion control, we can work with the staff. Um, we can we can stake hay bales or we can put straw wattles in, whatever, um, I mean, whatever you folks think are necessary. Sure. Okay, let me ask staff then. John uh, or Eileen, are you satisfied with that arrangement or do we need more specificity uh, for the erosion controls? Since it's a town department, it's almost a little different because you work closely together anyway. So by the time we have the draft decision, the draft decision will be more precise about where the erosion control should go and, and what they should be. All right. The next meeting. All right. So that will be the outstanding item then for the next meeting. All right. Okay. All right. So uh, is there anyone in the audience for this? This is the uh, reconfiguration of the parking lot and sidewalks and drainage at 61 Center Street, the Human Services Building. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to chime in? If so, please identify yourself. Okay, the record should show that no one uh, contributed at this time. You still have an opportunity since the hearing is gonna be left open if anybody does wish to say something. So uh, again, as before, uh, Tom, uh, we will uh, continue this. You'll ask for a continuance to uh, the next meeting on April 23rd, and I would expect we're going to close at that time. All right, that sounds good. All right, yeah, uh, Tom, with the very nice slick PowerPoint that you gave us, you kind of made us look pretty good for our first remote session. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> now we're on item uh, seven. Notice is here. Yes. I'm sorry. To, I, I put my hand up in the little uh, participant thing, but I don't think anybody noticed. I just, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just before we go any further, is there anything on the uh, agenda that's not going to be uh, covered? Today is is everybody here on the agenda? Because I, I don't know if there are people here waiting to get to an agenda uh, item. Is it? So that's so that's a good point. So um, this is John. Um, so the public hearing for 127 Bedford Street, which is agenda item number nine, is continued until June 11. They've requested to continue to June 11. That's it. Okay, so unless someone objects, we'll move along in order or has a suggestion different. Uh, it's a public hearing. This is item number seven. <clears throat> Notice is given the Town of Burlington Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing during which time we will take information related to an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation filed by GTH Homes LLC for the determination of the boundaries of jurisdictional wetland resource areas at an unnumbered Chandler Road parcel. It is parcel number 18-105-0. The applications being heard pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, which is the Wetlands Protection Act in Burlington Bylaw Article 14. The Commission will review all information relative to the application and may issue an order of resource area delineation. Uh, the application material again is available in the conservation office for any public review. All right, so is there a proponent for this particular project who would like to speak at this time? Uh, yes, this is Stephen Dresser, Dresser Williams and Way. Uh, good evening, nice to see you, or uh, hear you, I guess. I hope you're well. Thank you, I am. And uh, Craig Hickox with GTH Homes, I'm also here. All right, thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you for introducing yourself. Okay, the floor is yours. 
Uh, let's see if I, I'm kind of new to this, so I'm gonna. Well, it's a. You hear me? Yes, we do, and looks okay. like you're starting to share content. I'm trying to. <laughs> All right. Take your time. We're we're we're. Here we go. Okay, uh, this this property is on Chandler Road where we filed that abbreviated notice of resource area delineation. The wetlands have been flagged and there's also a vernal pool on the property. Uh, shown in kind of blue, if you can see it. The vernal pool is kind of dictated by, by the level of water that is here, and there's kind of a low point up the top here where this will fill up and then flow down. There's also a, a drain pipe that actually comes out of this and down Harris Drive, um, down into that subdivision's drainage system. Again, there are bordering vegetative wetlands associated with it. Uh, this is not a certified vernal pool. However, your regulations um, consider it a vernal pool it, it, if it is in fact shows the features of one, which it does. Uh, this gives it, for the vernal pool, there are extended buffer zones. Uh, the limit of, of the vernal pool, I guess, is considered 100 feet from what actually is the vernal pool. And then the buffer zones jump out from there. So there's actually a 200 foot buffer zone to the vernal pool with a hundred and you know and, and the subsequent uh, buffer zones would be reduced by that hundred feet the no clear and the no build uh, the intent of this is to eventually build a few houses on on this side of the parcel on the uh, I guess easterly side uh, in the remaining parcel it's mr. Hickok's intention to donate it to the town there's a large conservation area out in the back. Um, so this is just the beginning of this process to set the wetland line and, and identify the vernal pool so that we can move forward with the design and what, are, what, what the intentions of Mr. Hickox are. So any questions, glad to answer them. All right, thank you, Mr. Dresser. Um, uh, John or Eileen, I assume, uh, I, I believe you folks have uh, uh, been out there and checked the flags. Could you give us a few comments? Sure, this is John. Um, so yeah, I checked the delineation, the, the, uh, the wetland is flagged. The, um, the vernal pool is not flagged, but it's depicted on the plan. So you can get it, when you're out in the field with a plan, you could get a pretty good idea of where it would be in relation to the wetland flags. And it, it definitely seemed accurate um, so that the, the water level was you know several feet usually um, down gradient from the, the uh, BB, uh, BVW flags. Um, so um, the area behind it is the, the Mill Pond Conservation Area, which is sort of the, the our biggest and, and, and best conservation area. Um, and this, this wetland does flow into it. As you can see from the plan, a good portion of the vernal pool is actually on the Conservation Commission uh, land. Um, so anyway, so I would I would definitely um, recommend approving the boundaries of both the bordering vegetated wetland under the bylaw and the state regulations, and also the, the boundaries of the vernal pool under the local Burlington regulations. All right, John, are you suggesting that we uh, are in a position, we may be in a position to do that tonight? No, this is a public hearing. Um, once again, I would suggest that um, you continue this to allow for any comments from abutters who may may want to comment and propose to close and issue the ORAD on April 23rd. All right. Okay. That's in that's consistent with what we announced earlier in the meeting. Correct. All right. Okay. So uh, let me uh, see if there are any comments. Uh, Ed. Mr. Chairman, I think we lost Ed. Ed, are you lost? 
All right. Well, I will continue on and see if he chimes in. Uh, Jennifer. Uh, no comment. Uh, Bill. Uh, I did a drive by today. It's a beautiful piece of property, heavily wooded, not much in the way of invasives. Personally, I'd hate to see it have a bunch of trees cut down and houses put on it, but uh, if it fits within the rules, then we would probably have to allow it. Uh, I'm happy to see at least some of it going to be preserved and perhaps uh, donated to the town uh, because it abuts the conservation land. It would be ideal if the town acquired the whole lot, but we don't have that uh, necessarily as an option. Uh, when you said it uh, shows features of the vernal pool, does that mean uh, with uh, with wildlife? I mean, with salamanders or how, what, what does that mean? Just uh, just visually or what? Asking me or John? Or this is John. I can answer. I, this is John. I can answer that question. Um, so it has the topological features. I mean, it was determined before, but if you go out there now, we're in prime prime vernal pool uh, season. I'm sure if you went out there and looked for egg masses, you'd find many of them. Okay, and uh, you know the salamanders have a wide range beyond the uh, the, the vernal pool. Correct. Okay, Bill, if you're through the comment, I mean, as far as the NRAD, I think I have no issue. All right, Indra. Uh, oh, John, uh, uh, this is Indra. John, uh, you said delineation is correct? Right, both delineations, the bordering vegetated wetland and the vernal pool delineation, I agree with. Oh, okay, thank you, yeah. Yeah. I'm all set. Yes, for the delineation, I'm fine. All right, Don? Yeah, I'm fine with the delineation as well. Kent. That looks fine to me. All right, I have a question for John. John, uh, is the documentation of the limits of the vernal pool sufficient as they are depicted on the plan, or is anything more in the way of documentation in text or out in the field required? I well, I would say when they file a notice of intent, we would we want we would want the vernal pool staked out in the field. Um, so um, there's no there's no markings in the field. There's it's just on the plan. Um, so prior to any when they file for an actual project, we'd want it staked out. But I think for the purpose of this, it's, we don't need any field documentation. All right. So we're not we're not finding the exact line of the vernal pool tonight. No, we are. It's depicted on the plan, and. Okay. Um, and you can when you're going out so the wetland the wetland flags are in the field and the the uh, vernal pool is variable but it's generally five to ten feet inside the bvw line on the plan so um i mean i think that's accurate enough without actually putting flags out there they went along and surveyed it using the high water um yes. but, but didn't flag it i think that's fine all right does your does your decision actually say uh five it, the vernal pool is within five to 20, 10 feet of the border. Well, we don't have a draft decision at this point. Okay, so you may want to give it a range. So if a, if a tweak or an adjustment is needed, uh, that might become important if a project is proposed. Because it's 100 well, feet. I, so, I, so I looked at the, beaver, the, the vernal pool line. When I went to every wetland flag, I looked at it, then looked at the plan to see where they had, where they had the vernal pool in relation to that flag. And in every case, I didn't go out there with the tape measure, but every in every case, I thought it was reasonable as depicted on the plan. Okay, that's good enough. Thank you. All right, so uh, uh, Mr. Dresser, I guess we would ask you to continue uh, to uh, April 23rd, and it sounds like that we will, uh, before I do that, let me see if there's anybody in the audience for this. I meant to do that. Okay, is there anyone who would like to uh, in the audience, uh, in the way of a Butters or anyone else who's interested in this project, who would like to make a comment, and you should identify yourself uh, if you are online with us now.
All right, just so for the record, so they know they can again uh, submit comments or concerns uh, regarding this proceeding to the Conservation Commission. And since we will be able to uh, review that at the next meeting since the hearing is being kept open, but we would anticipate closing on April 23rd. Any comment from anyone? I think I, Larry, I, think I just, just like to add that, you know, so, so if people are watching this or rewatch this, that we do have to come back for the notice of intent. So there was, the public would be aware there's going to be, once we go get to the development phase, there'll be another meeting that they'll have the opportunity to, to have comments. Very good point. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else from anyone else? I would just, okay, Cox, I'd just like to add that, um, you know, my partner, Bob and I, Richard, um, we're 100% we're on board and preserving this area. It's a beautiful piece of land. And when I met with John Key, when I went to purchase the land, um, his eyes lit up saying, that's my land, you know? So what we did is we're trying to do a, a really something good for the town here is to build a street and we'll take down trees, but we're gonna put a row of trees back up as we always do. And I think it's gonna be really beneficial to the town to have that over that acre of land, they can make it conservation so nobody can ever touch it again. Um, so I, I just feel, I feel really good. I think this is a good collaboration project and I just want you guys to feel com confident it was going to, we're going to keep it and make it look beautiful. Uh, thank you for your comments, Mr. Hickox. Uh, I, will, I will just add that one of the things that seems to be common in Burlington is when houses are built, of course, the the lot is completely cleared. I have seen on occasion, and sometimes more often in other towns, where the lots are not completely cleared, and selective trees are selected because of their maturity and and you know their their health status are selected to remain. Uh, if you chose to do that on any of the lots, I would think you would be among a minority choosing to. which is to leave some trees remaining on some lots in, in selected portions. Yes, sure. Okay. Whatever we can, Larry. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, all right, so uh, I think this proceeding will continue on April 23rd, unless someone has something further. Uh, thank you to you folks and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you all, stay safe. You too, folks. Yeah, thank you too. Excellent. Okay, well. Okay. All right. Okay, so the next item on the is item eight. It is a continued public hearing. It's a notice of intent. Seven wins. Nine rambles. Uh, we're getting some feedback from somewhere. You might want to mute your microphone. All right. <laughs> We're getting a notice of intent. It's a continued public hearing, 7 Wind Street and 9 Randall Drive, Church of the Open Bible. Uh, it's to reconstruct the parking lot. Uh, DEP file number 122-640. Uh, I wasn't at the last meeting, but I have watched the meeting on video and saw what happened. All right, is there someone here for that project? Please introduce yourself and who you are with. Good evening, um, Maureen Harold from North Environmental Services. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm here for the um, the Open Bible Church. Um, at the last conservation hearing, the commission asked for uh, a few minor plan changes. Um, fortunately, I'm new to this. I didn't realize I could bring the plan into the meeting. So that's my goof and I apologize. Um, but the plans were revised. Um, one of the commissioners requested curb breaks within the annex parking lot island. Um, that has been done and is shown on the plan. Um, there was also concern about a drainage swale within the annex parking lot. Um, commission had asked us to refigure that drainage swale so that we avoid uh, cutting some of the existing vegetation. 
So we reconfigured that swale to preserve all the vegetation on site. Um, we added a note to the plan, which is in the bottom right hand corner, um, basically stating that the curbing around the catch basin on the church parking lot area, um, that that will be removed. And we also added a second note that says that either crushed stone or vegetated areas will be added to the gutter outlets. And I believe that addressed all of the conservation's concerns last month. Um, this is Eileen. Can you see the plan? Yes. All right, John or Eileen, do you have comments? Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. This is Eileen. Um, uh, I don't, the, the only comments I have are to just um, uh, um, reiterate what Maureen said. Um, they uh, they added stone to the gutter outlets, which was sort of above and beyond what they really uh, were required to do based on what you had asked for. They uh, reconfigured the uh, annex parking lot uh, to avoid the vegetation, and they put curb breaks in the annex parking lot because the commissioners were concerned about uh, the sheet flow in the annex parking lot. And they removed the curbing around the catch basin on the church parking lot um, side. So they they basically did everything that was um, uh, that that was commented upon last um, in the last meeting. Okay. Uh, do you have any further concerns, Eileen, regarding the project before we see if there's any comments? I no, I don't. I don't have any further concerns. All right. Let's see if there's any. Uh, remaining uh, uh, concerns or comments from the commission. Ed, are you still with us at all? Can you hear me? We can. Yay. Oh, I couldn't get back in video. I don't I crashed. Uh, no comments. All right. Okay. Well, it looks like you uncrashed yourself. I'm trying. Well, phone wise, I'm in on now. <laughs> all right. Uh, Jennifer. Uh, no, it would appear that you addressed everything um, that we brought up at the last meeting. So, thank you. All right, Bill. Uh, I got distracted for a second. Did we mention the downspouts from the church themselves? We had uh, talked about them going onto the soil rather than right into the parking lot and perhaps even some crushed stone. Yeah, so I added a note on the right hand corner of the plan that says that um, crushed stone or vegetated areas will be added at the gutter outlets. Are you talking about the, the from the church? Correct. Okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood that. All right, thank you. Sure. All right. Uh, uh, Indra, I guess it's your turn. Yes, uh, I was not in the meeting last time, but I did watch the video of the meeting. I just wanted to mention. I have uh, one question, uh, Maureen. Uh, I heard that you are not supposed to put any carving around the catch basin. Am I correct? Did I hear that properly? Yes, that's correct. So the catch basin currently on the church side of the parking lot has curbing. And as a way to improve the existing site conditions, we wanted to incorporate some vegetated swales beyond the existing pavement that's there now. So we wanted to remove the curbing so that the water can flow past it, and, you know, on heavy rain events flow past the catch basin and actually this will be utilized. So it shows on the plan? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. All right, Gail. All set. Uh, Don. All set. Uh, Kent. All set. I guess Kent is muted, but I must be okay. I'm, I guess. I'm okay. Okay, thank you, Kent. Uh, very good. Uh, I did, I had, oh, well, okay, it's my turn. I had one question. Uh, you're removing uh, some curbing in the back 
uh, along Randall Drive there ar around, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you're doing uh, uh, full depth uh, regrading, uh, removing existing all the pavement material and putting in new asphalt in that area, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. All right, so here's the question I, so here's the question I have. Uh, are any, uh, the, one, I, I haven't, I haven't, been, I've been out to your site previously, but I wasn't out just recently and I can't remember something. Uh, is, um, does the parking lot out there, this is to the commissioners or John or Eileen or to Maureen, uh, does the parking lot um, grade uh, have enough of a pitch to uh, enhance the fact that we would like the water that is uh, in that area or a substantial portion of the parking lot to flow off the end there. In other words, I guess what I'm asking, I'm trying to ask is, do we need spot grades on the plan? Since it's a full depth replacement, uh, spot grades would, would enhance the possibility that the asphalt uh, company would pay attention to how uh, the lot is graded so that the curb brakes work. That's my question. So um, this is a bit of a low budget operation. So in the event of just trying to save the church some money in terms of permitting, um, we have used this plan that's in front of you. Um, the plan, actually, the person that engineered the plan or shows the existing conditions of the plan has actually passed away. So it's an existing older plan. Um, we were hoping that the commission um, would work with us on it. I, I understand the concern about adding spot grades. Um, if, we, if the commission requires spot grades, we'll essentially need to do a whole new plan have it professionally land surveyed in, an, in a whole new plan. And, and right now, and to further add, uh, of worship are in a, quite a predicament given current circumstances too, with the financial resources. So Larry, this is, this is John. So the parking lot on the other side of Wyman Street from the church, where they're yeah. putting in the curb brakes, there's, this is, there's a noticeable slope down towards the wetlands from there. I don't think there's any problem with the water going in that direction. It's it's where it goes now, and and they're not going to change it by paving it. It's it's yeah. a significant. Well, I, I was talking about the other side, the side that on Randall Drive and back of the on the side of the church there itself, the church lot. So that also currently pitches. There's a catch basin there, and it all pitches towards that catch basin. So there's no need to be. Uh, what you're saying is there's no need for concerns are any instructions to the asphalt pavement company? I mean, I think it would be, a, I think I would agree with Maureen that that would be significant, not only, you know, to send out a survey crew and take spot grades and add that yeah. to the plan for, for a church repaving, I think is probably not necessary. Yeah, I, well, I actually agree, but I thought sometimes in lieu of doing spot grades, you can give instructions to informally to the app make sure it's clear that that's what you're trying to do is to make sure that the end product it slopes in that direction hey this is Wayne. this is Wayne Riggs from the Church of the Open Bible that was that's been my communication to the um, companies that we've been in contact with and that's our um, plan to do I mean that will only again enhance the all the work that we're talking about with swales and stormwater improvement so that's our that's our um, all right. Purpose is to do all that. So, so you've you've had that discussion that the purpose of of the breaks and the flow of the water is to go in that direction. Yes. Yep. Informally, um, and then we would. Yes, we've had that. Okay. Given everyone's comments, I certainly accept that. Thank you for the comments. Okay. Uh, who was it that talked? I didn't quite get your name. Sorry. This is Wayne Root from the Church of the Open Bible. Great, Wayne. Thank you. All right. So. Uh, uh, I think I went through all the comments. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to make a comment about the re 
paving project at the Church of the Open Bible. I'll, I'll, I'll have a pause here for a minute to see if anyone chimes in. Well, the record should show that no one, uh, there was no public participation in this project as of now. Uh, uh, John, what is the timeline for this project? It looked like there wasn't uh, uh, any major issues that we need. Uh, when would you suggest closing the hearing on this one? Um, John is muted, but I think we were hoping to close it this evening. I'm All sorry. Right. Yes, and I, as I was saying, Lisa, Lisa is actually monitoring the Facebook feed. I'm checking chat. Um, we're getting no comments whatsoever. We had no abutters at the initial hearing, and we didn't hear it from anybody uh, subsequent to that hearing. So I think it's ready to close. All right. So I will just... Uh... Uh, put it on my screen behind me, not on your screen. Uh, John, would you uh, uh, like to review the decisions, please? Uh, or Eileen, either one? And had, does the applicant have a draft copy as well as the other question? Um, no, I did not send it to them. I'm sorry about that, Maureen. Um, but I'm sharing, I'm sharing them right now, and we'll, I hope everybody can see it, and we'll just go through this as is. And if anybody has any comments, I can, you know, make, make, uh, I can make notes. So um, this is the order um, where we, we've referenced the Notice of Intent site plan, the fact that it was, had, uh, it was an original plan with draft edits made by Norse Environmental, so it's not signed or stamped. Um, the proposed activity shall com comply with the above reference plan, except as conditioned herein. Um, I'm, I'm just going to skip down through a few of these like I normally would, but I'm just going to highlight some. So this order permits work within the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands and no work within any wetland resources being permitted by this decision. Um, I'm just going to move on to the next page and read some of the highlights. Um, so the Church of the Open Bible must give us notice between two and five days prior the commencement, commencement of any activity on site. Um, that at, at that time, they shall provide evidence that the order of conditions has been filed in the registry of deeds and that um, actually we're not going to, we're not doing a surety on it, unless anybody has an objection. Um, prior to commencing any work on site, the proposed limit of work um, shall be clearly marked with flag, stakes, markers or flags. Um, the limit of work in these areas shall be reviewed in the field with conservation staff and prior to commencing any work erosion controls. Sorry, the applicant shall be and, and their contractor shall meet with conservation staff to review the, the order. And at that time, they'll need to show evidence that the order has been filed. They need to provide a list of who's doing the work, uh, photographs of the um, before uh, shots and the, a sign displaying their DEP file number. And at that time, we'll also be inspecting whatever erosion controls are being required. Um, as it says in number 32, this is saying that erosion control shall be installed by hand as shown on the reference plan. Materials should not be stockpiled on the site within 40 feet of the wetlands. No dewatering shall be permitted on site unless without prior approval by Conservation Commission. At the end of each workday, the applicant shall mechanically sweep or manually sweep sediments from the street. Catch basins within 100 feet of the work shall be protected with silt sacks or equivalent. Conservation Commission reserves the right to require additional erosion controls or damage prevention controls if deemed necessary. No additional grading beyond what's shown on the plan shall be permitted without um, an additional filing. Um, any debris that falls into the wetlands shall be removed by hand and this um, condition shall be noted on the certificate of compliance in perpetuity. No discharge or spilling or of fuel or oil um, on site, um, re refueling shall be has to be 50 feet from the wetlands. Um, these are all standard conditions about no more than a total of 50 gallons of fuel should be shall be routinely stored on the site. Um, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides shall not be used within 100 feet of the wetlands, and this condition shall be noted on the certificate of compliance in perpetuity. Runoff from the parking lots shall be managed as shown on the approved plan. Curbing alongside the catch basin at the northwestern parking lot close to Wind Street is to be removed to allow 
stormwater to reach the swell and curb breaks shall be added to the annexed parking lot close to Randall Drive to allow overland flow to the proposed swale and wetland at the southeastern end of the site. In addition, crushed stone shall be added to the gutter, church gutter outlets to mitigate the, the dispersal of stormwater directly onto the paved parking lot. The areas behind those swales shall be left as naturally vegetated and shall not be maintained as lawn or landscaped areas, and this shall be noted on the certificate of compliance as existing in perpetuity. And the last is just uh, the requirements for what will be needed to get a, um, a certificate of compliance. Does anybody have any comments on that one before I go on to the bylaw? Yeah, uh, anybody from Church of the Open Bible, do you, have you heard anything that you think we should discuss? Uh, nope, not from my perspective. I don't know. Yeah. No, looks good. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, Eileen, please continue. I will. I'm just opening up the uh, the bylaw draft. Okay. Um. So the findings. Uh, this notice of intent was filed for repaving of the main and annex parking lots, removal of an island closure of the Randall Street entrance and installation of grass swales with stone outlets within the 100 foot buffer zone to border and vegetated wetlands. The next portion is just the filing um, history. Um, it was filed on uh, February 28th. The, um, it was continued, the, it opened on March 26th and was continued, sorry, no, it did not open on March 26th. It did, but that, I forgot, but, but the hearing was, um, was canceled and was further continued. Um, and it, it again references the notice of intent site plan with draft edits. The proposed work was, was within the 100 foot buffered zone to bordering vegetated wetlands, and the closest point of the new swales is approximately 20 feet from the BVW. Um, uh, under stormwater management, we had said erosion sediment controls will be implemented during construction, minimizing any impact to the resource areas and Burlington's municipal stormwater system. New swales will be constructed as low impact stormwater <laughs> management mitigation. There will be no increase in impervious area. And most of the rest of this is sort of as standard. Um, it, it references that again, no construction will take place on site until the installation of erosion control is complete. And references the order of conditions. And um, this is just highlighted because I've changed the, the, the way it usually looks. So I, I, we were not proposing a bond, given that it's a church project. Any comments? All right. Uh, is there any comments from the folks at the Church of the Open Bible or from the commission? This is Indra. I have just one comment. Uh, no. Uh, is this a 501c3? That's why there is no charge or any money for. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any further comments? Please identify yourself. Maureen at Newell's, no comments. All right. Uh, I'll add then that these conditions are. Uh, Maureen, you may not have, I don't know if you've seen an order of conditions like the ones we come out with, but for us, this is actually, we consider this relatively routine. There's a lot of them, but they are relatively routine things. Um, so, all right, so with that, uh, is there any further comment from anyone? Did I ask for public participation? On, uh, did I? I think I did that already. Yes. All right. Yes, you did. All right. All right. So uh, if there's no further comment, uh, then I would like to have a motion to close the hearing on DEP file number 122-640. Yes, so move. Second. Second. All right. Uh, by roll call, uh, Don. How do you vote? Yes. Gail. Yes. Indra. Yes. Bill. Yes. Bill. Yes. 
All right, thank you. <laughs> uh, Jennifer. Yes. Ed. Yes. And Larry votes yes. That carries unanimously. Okay, next, could I have a motion to uh, adopt the findings under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 or DEP file number uh, 122-640? This is Indra, so moved. Second. Bill, second. All right, let's go through this again. Don. Yes. Gail. Yes. Indra. Yes. Bill. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Ed. Yes. And Larry votes yes. All right, that carries unanimously. Could I have a motion to uh, adopt the order of conditions under Burlington Bylaw Article 14 and the State Wetlands Protection Act or DEP file number 122-640? So move, Bill. Ed. <laughs> okay. Is Ed seconds? All right, roll call. Don. Yes. Don. Yes. Gail. Yes. Indra. Yes. Bill. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Ed. Yes. And Larry votes yes. That carries unanimously. Okay, so. I think we are uh, all set with this project. I wish you the best of luck with the project. If you have questions, uh, feel free to uh, contact uh, our staff, and I'm sure they can work out any issues that you have. What's going on? Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate um, the commission coming together and doing this remotely. Thank you. All right. It went very smooth. Thank you all for your presentation. Okay. Have a good night. You too. Have a good night. Stay safe. Okay, so that's where we are. Uh, nine was continued, which is 127 Bedford Street. We're now on administration. Uh, John or Eileen, do we have planning board comments? No planning board comments. All right, from any of our commission members, our commission members, do we have any subcommittee or staff reports or updates of anything ongoing? I'd like to comment. Yes, that's a no. Uh, upcoming meetings. We have two meetings on the agenda listed on the agenda. The next one in April is April 23rd, and the next one is May 14th. Uh, given the state of uh, things in our country, I anticipate both of those might be by remote participation again. Uh, other business. Uh, John, do you have anything? John or Eileen? I don't have anything additional. Eileen, is there anything you coming up? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right. Uh, anything further from our commissioners? Anyone would like to make any comments on anything? It's under other. Yeah, sorry, I got cut off. <laughs> <laughs> minor, minor problem. Uh, I can move for an adjournment. <laughs> All right. for, uh, okay, then I'd like to make a comment. For uh, a fairly well packed agenda, I think you commission members did outstanding. We are, it is now 8 29 and we're ready to call for adjournment. I think that's a world record for such a packed agenda. <laughs> All right, so uh, unless someone has a comment, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Indra. Second, Jennifer. All right, so uh, let's uh, uh, see. Okay, uh, Dawn, do you agree with the motion to adjourn? I agree. Gail. Yes. Indra. Yes. Yes. Jennifer. Ed. Yes. All right. That sounds like a unanimous decision. Everyone <laughs> stay safe and have a good night. Great job, everybody. Yeah, great job. Thank you all.